Are you kidding me? Again? Oh, let me show you what came in the mail today. On the day that I completed the third video, this actually showed up, and I thought it was going to be a while. But we can start designing this and how this is going to go together. So I said there was going to be a lot of change, and once I got the gear and the gear rack, I noticed that there's really not any way to mount it down here. It's convenient without building this up some more to get the gear rack on it. So I thought, well, I'm just going to mount the gear rack right to this rail, and then we can mount the motor right here. So even though I got the gear and the gear rack, I still don't have the motor, but I know what the dimensions are for the shaft. It's a half inch bore or half inch shaft that's an inch and a quarter long. This gear here, the diameter is three one thousandths shy of being an inch and an eighth. So I can drill an inch and eighth hole all the way through here so that I can mount this to the motor first. Once the motor's in here, you're not going to be able to attach this gear to it. <clears throat> We're going to have to put a set screw and or a keyway in it because that didn't come milled. When this is mounted here to the gear rack, it's seven eighths of an inch from the face of the bracket to the face of the gear. That's only going to give us about three eighths of an inch, which is the hub here itself may not be enough a shaft in the gear. So we may in the future recess the motor housing just a little bit so that we get a little more shaft into the gear if it becomes a problem. This rack is going to actually sit upside down so that I don't get any debris in it and cause problems with the gear meshing with it. So with that, we got to start milling on all our parts. The gear rack needs to be drilled, countersunk, there's no holes in it. So we're going to get going on that. So you can see the width of this rack is not very much. It's 5.7 millimeters. I put a mic on it. I mic the screw head, which is 4.31. 4.3. Quick math here, that leaves us 1.4 difference. Divide that in half. We need 7 tenths of a millimeter from the edge to the edge of our screw. Screw is 4.3, divide it 2, 2.15, add the 0.7, 2.85. Center of our hole is from the edge, 2.85 millimeters over. Drill the hole 2.85 millimeters from the edge of this board. Put this board in the drill press with the hole with the uh, drill bit in it, and set a fence up against it. This fence will be the guide on our gear rack. gear is going to be from the center of these bearings to these bearings and from this bearing over to this bearing. Right in the center. It'll mount like such. I'm going to put a bigger hole about a quarter inch deep and then an inch and eighth hole all the way through. Kind of mocked up where the gear and where the rack is going to be. A little line right here. That's the dado that I need to remove right there along that line.
look what came in the mail today. Who else gets excited about Neiman 34 stepper motors? So you can see that I put the gear on the shaft, temporarily mounted the stepper motor in here, engaged the rack inside through the dado, engaged it with the gear, put the rack right about in the center of the gear rack, and the measure down from the top on both sides to make sure that it was equal from the top down, and I have 65 millimeters. I put a temporary block here to maintain that 65 millimeters right here. I'm gonna start and I'm gonna work down this way and just screw it off. There's a lot of deflection in this when this is all the way down, so it's really important that it's screwed off at least every foot to make it stable. This will be our only adjustment that we have. Um, there's other ways that we could design, made some kind of adjustment, but this will work fine just to get adjusting the gear rack up and down. So I'm gonna start here, work down 65 millimeters from the top to the top of the rack gear. So you can see, I went 65 millimeters down, put in my first screw, got a temporary block down on the other end. I'm just gonna roll this down to each screw, making sure that it engages and I'll just let the pressure of the rack just engage itself, roll it right on down. Put a tiny bit of pressure downward. Roll it down to the next one and we'll be good all the way down. So my gear rack is only six foot, I need to add 30 more inches. When you're doing that, make sure that you put the manufactured end against the manufactured end so that the gear will stay in contact with it all the way through. If you put it on the cut end, it may not stay engaged. So I found that just buttoning this up here didn't get it done. It was too tight, it wouldn't roll. So I just used the gear to make the little space about a thousand and just that screw in there was perfect or just use an extra piece of track to line it up so I made two more of these rails that were just like the ones I did for the x-axis this one here is for the y same process as before, I saved you the boredom of all the grinding and polishing and drilling and gluing up. I put elongated holes, one foot all the way down. I'm gonna put a pilot hole right in here and I'm gonna use a T-nut in the gantry and I'll have some adjustment to this so that I can tighten it however I need to tighten it. Don't know where this top rail is gonna go yet because the pillow block is on its way in the mail right now as we speak. And when it gets here, I'll know where I need to set this and I'll do the same thing with it and put a pilot hole in and give us a little bit of adjustment because of the elongated holes. But right now, I can go ahead and start on the bottom one. Let's go to double time. I think literally as the last bolt was going in, my front door bell rings and I think I got a new present. A 20 millimeter diameter, 600 milliliter, millimeter long ball screw. Who doesn't get excited about that? And a pillow block. That'll go right there. That way we know 
minimum that we have to have for our space here. We'll probably give ourselves a little more room than that. And there we go. Save you from the boredom of mounting this top rail, but I did it the same way as I mounted the bottom rail. Use the pillow blocks as my spacer, added three quarters of an inch. Um, it's kind of bulky. Some day I might make it more aesthetically pleasing, but it's solid and it's gonna work. Uh, in our next video, we're gonna put the bracket on that's gonna take the Z-axis that moves along the Y rails. So I gotta go run some errands, we'll see you later. So I finally got this complete with these two rails. What I failed to do, as you saw on my alert, was didn't take into account the inch and a quarter eager bearing that's gonna ride down here. So it was messing up our clearance. So I got to mount this one over again. So I got to mount that two times. And then another brain, th brain dead thing that I did was when I went to remount this one, I used the pillow block like that when goes like that and that really messed up our clearance so I got to mount this one three times and then to top it off I really recommend don't doing this is I decided to screw this all the way off of the ball screw to see what my overall thread length was when you do that bearings go everywhere and it takes you about an hour to an hour and a half to reseal this and put all the bearings in there and it is not fun. Highly recommend against this. So onward and upward, we're gonna create our bracket here that's gonna slide along the Y-axis. We're gonna create our mount for our router and we'll do that all in the next video. See you soon.